So somebody asked me the other day if I've ever actually tested the Hex Plus system from Vera that's supposed to make it less likely to strip or damage a fastener. It got me thinking, I think I might have enough test equipment to actually do that. So I scrounged together some things to actually test that theory. So the way I'm going to test this is I'm going to apply a load to the screws, one with the hex, a hex plus L key and one without. And what we'll do, we'll examine them to see uh, if there's any damage done. The way I'm actually going to measure the, the tension on the bolt is actually using a special type of load cell. This is called a through-hole load cell. Some people call them donut load cells, but basically they're designed specifically for this task for measuring the tension on a bolt. I've seen some people try to do what I'm trying to do with hydraulics and that I just don't think that's going to work. So this load cell is from uh, Transducer Techniques. There's a part number. It's a 10,000 pound load cell. I'm going to use a quarter inch bolt. This is a quarter 28. And there you go, there's the part number for the the socket cap screws I'm going to use. So it's a, it's a mil spec uh, socket cap screw. Pretty much equivalent to a grade 8. And then what I did, I took a piece of 6061 aluminum and I tapped a couple of quarter 28 holes in it. It's, a, it's essentially a strain gauge. So what it's actually outputting in its normal state, you need to have to go through some kind of signal conditioner to actually measure it. So I picked up this load cell amplifier off Amazon uh, just to convert it into 4 to 20 milliamps. I found this thing in the dumpster a couple years ago. What this actually is, this is an industrial um, gauge. 4 to 20 milliamp, it's, it's only loop powered. This is the kind of gauge that you would see like in a um, you know power station or a nuclear power control room because they're pretty much almost indestructible. You can see there's no other inputs going into it, just the loop power. So this actually this this one was actually used by uh, Westinghouse and it was it was used to measure uh, tension of a tether. So this one went uh, zero to five thousand pounds. It's amazing the kind of stuff you'll find in the dumpster. So it's not really important to have everything calibrated because really what I'm testing is I'm comparing uh, two things. I'm not actually testing this against a standard. So it's not important to have this calibrated or this calibrated. So since this goes zero to five and this is 10,000, you just need to multiply this by 2,000 and that'll get your bolt tension. And then this is powered by 24 volts. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. And you can see the, the needle rose a little bit. So let me zoom you in on that. So this little screw down here is actually for zeroing um, the needle out. And this, this gauge, the reason why it's so big back here is because it actually has a lot of dampening built into it. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the main one is because a lot of times you get dirty signals and you don't want the needle to be jumping around. But also it protects the needle from bending. If you were up here at 3,000 pounds and all of a sudden it dropped to zero, you don't want that needle to be have all that inertia when it hits the bottom here. So just to show you how how that zeroing works, you could turn it, and you can see the delayed response. So that's what you're going to see when I start putting tension on this. You're not going to see this go up very fast. Since this is a quarter inch socket cap, it takes a three sixteenths. And in case anybody was wondering about the clamping load of a quarter 28, a grade 8 would be 3,280 pounds. So I have this VHA L key. Now it's not really important what brand I use to represent the other L key. And it doesn't really matter about the length because we're going to a specific tension. It just is going to be harder to get to it with this shorter one. But basically I just need one without the hex plus and one with the hex plus. So in case anybody is asking about these screws, they're brand new. They've never been used at all. So we'll use this hole over here for the non-hex plus and we'll use this one for the hex plus. So first thing we'll do, we'll take this to 2,000 pounds 
that's about 2,000. And then we'll release that tension. And then we'll take we'll take this one to the same tension with the hex plus system. So there we go, right about 2,000. So if we take a look here, this, this one over here is the hex plus. This is the normal oil key. And as expected, you're not going to see that much damage. But you can definitely tell that one on the left there is starting to get a little chowdered up in the, uh, in the L's, in, inside the in hex there. So I think we'll, we'll go to the clamping load. We'll go to about 3,000 pounds, so which would be about 1.5 on this scale. So there you go, that's 3,000. So now we'll go to the hex plus system, we'll go to 3,000. So there you go, we're at 3,000 pounds. And we'll pull that back off. Down in there, the contact uh, wearing is definitely different for the hex plus. So this one over here is the hex plus one. All right, so now we're gonna take it past the design load. All right, so you saw it actually go back down after it got past 4,000. And what that, what's happening there is the threads are starting to stretch out. So we'll go ahead and uh, take the tension back off this one. So it looks like that one, the most I could get out of it, would be about 4,200 pounds. Now what I expect is to get to pretty much the same thing will happen. We'll get to about 4,200 and then it's going to start stretching the threads out. Yep, same thing. We got to about 4,200. It starts stretching out. So if we look here, so this one on the left here, this is without the hex plus system, and you can see up in there starting to actually peen over those corners. And this one right here is on the right is with the hex plus, and I'm not seeing really any damage at all on the one with the hex plus. So one thing we need to do is we need to test these things to failure. And I can probably do that using a longer screw. So since I pulled those uh, screws through, I went ahead and tapped a couple more holes here. I put some, these are for some 832. So we'll go a little bit smaller and then I put a bunch of M5s in the middle here. But we'll go with, a, uh, with some 832s. This is a stainless steel grade. 832 and they're from 1986 so they're 31 year old screws here we'll give one of these huskies a try as the control because this one's a little bit this is a little bit longer than the other ones i have so these are actually going to go through the material here so we'll get full we'll get a half inch of uh, thread engagement so for this one let's just see how tight we can get it Yep, and looks like we stripped the head on that. So hopefully there's enough here to get this off. It's not looking good. All right, I was just barely able to get that loose. Do the same thing with the hex plus. So this, since this is an 832, this is a 532nd L key. See if we can get more tension out of the bolt using the hex plus system. We're still going. All right, so we're we're stretching the threads now because it's not getting any higher. I'm turning it, but it's not raising the tension any. So that means we're actually uh, stretching the threads out. And the threads are actually absorbing the, the extra tension I'm giving it. 
So, and look at that, no problems getting that loose. So here's a, a close-up of the, the damage that was done on those heads. So as you can see, this one right here was done with a, a non-hex plus L key. And this one right here was the hex plus, which we actually got more tension out, and we didn't damage the fastener. So that right there is the reason why I pretty much have stopped using anything but the hex plus L keys. Because especially when you work with old rusty uh, fasteners. So eventually, I guess when the patent runs out, every manufacturer is going to start doing this. But as of right now, unless Vera is going to license that technology, they're the only ones who are, who are putting out a product that has it. Now, I don't have any affiliation with Vera, with Vera or Vera Tools at all. This is just my personal opinion. So for those that are interested in the technical details of why this system is better than all the rest, this is just one of the patents that they released on this Hex Plus system. And they actually give all the dimensions of the profile. So essentially the way this is working is on a normal L key, you're going to have just a point here that's going to be making contact with the sidewall of the, of the socket cap. What they, what they actually did was they made this curvature so that you actually are getting more surface area touching that inner surface. And that's basically how they're able to get more, more force out of it. And they basically do it on both sides depending if you're tightening or loosening fastener. So if you're somebody who works around old rusty fasteners and you have this and you run into this problem a lot where you're stripping these heads, Definitely take a look at these uh, these Hex Plus uh, L keys. So here I'll give you a, an extreme close up. So here, these screws are a little bit too close together, but it'll just do for this de demonstration. So these are some M5 stainless steel screws. So first we'll we'll go ahead and just strip the head on on this one, and it's pretty much already stripped. So you can see there, and then let's get a, a hex plus. So these are the stainless steel hex plus. Let's we'll do the same thing on this one, and we'll see if we can see a difference once we actually do strip it. Because eventually you will strip it. You're either going to strip the head, or you're going to pull the threads through. But yeah, I can already tell this one getting a lot more strength, a lot more force out of it. But I think it's going to go. So that's another thing I just noticed is you get a lot more warning out of this system than you do the old, the old because that was really stuck in there. So there was still, I can still probably turn it a little bit more. So let's see if I can back out the, the one we stripped over here. Nope. Let's see if I can back it out with the hex plus. So what I'm noticing is that it doesn't even fit anymore. With the hex plus, it's so deformed. Oh, looks like all right. So I got it in there. So let's see if we can back it out with the hex plus. Yeah, look at that. So even though that screw head was totally stripped, there's enough. The profile of this allowed us to get that to back off. There's another little demonstration on the power of the hex plus system. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'll put some links down to some of these products. There's many different forms that you can get these in. Obviously, the I prefer the long arm versions. This, this is the metric and SAE set, which comes in a pouch. But they also get this, the really short ones, and you can pick these up for well under $10, this set right here. And then for those who work on stainless fasteners a lot, they also offer these stainless steel sets which are designed to minimize cross-contamination uh, when you're just working on stainless fasteners. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and I'll catch you guys next time.